answer, me. There, I beat you to it. People throw the word grifter around a lot, so I figured it's probably best to actually talk about what it means. From a historical point of view, the root of the word comes from graft, which appeared around the 15th century in botanical context. You know, like grafting plant shoots and such. Through the botanical influence, by the 19th century, the maximum amount of soil you could dig up with a shovel or a spade in one scoop was known as that tool's graft. And shortly thereafter, the act of digging was known as grafting. This later generalized to any kind of hard work. By 1865, graft was considered a slang term for obtaining profit or advantage by dishonest or shady means, especially bribery, blackmail, or the abuse of a position of power or influence. The shift from honest hard work to dishonest tactics that nonetheless still may require hard work to pull off is also attributed to the term's origin in botany. Grafting techniques of that era often created excrescences in the plants, an excrescence being a distinct abnormal outgrowth of a living organism that is malformed or diseased in some way. The implication is obvious. While a graft may require as much effort as honest work, it is not actually honest work. By the turn of the century, grift was considered a diminutive form of graft, which is commonly done in the English language by replacing a word's vowel with the letter I. A grafter was considered to be somebody who engages in political corruption, and a grifter was a small-time confidence man or a carnival swindler. And while grafter's usage in this way has fallen out of popularity, mingling with its botanical and hard-working variants, grifter has remained to the present day. It currently refers to a person who is willing to say or do anything to make money, but not in a positive, hard-working context, rather in a negative, dishonest context. They have no problems with lying, cheating, or stealing. They will say things that they explicitly know to be false, or they will completely abandon the idea of consistency in their pursuits. To be a grifter, it helps to be a sociopath, but it's not exactly necessary. You just have to know how to manipulate people, and to make them think they want to give you their money, at least long enough for them to actually give it to you. Boy, I knew that English degree would pay off one day. Uh, hit up my subscribe star if you want to help me pay for it. Unless you actually consider me a grifter, then I guess it's okay. But that's the rub, isn't it? If I were a real grifter, and as part of the grift I was trying to create a reputation based on honesty and voluntary action, I would say things like, here's my donation links, guys. You don't have to donate if you can't afford it, though. Who knows if I'm being compassionate towards my viewers, or I'm just cultivating an image of compassion in order to get paid without actually meaning it. Who knows what level of the game each of us are playing at? And the truth is, you can't really know. A perfect grifter will never let you. Nowadays, if you hang around political YouTube, you'll notice the terms grift or grifter tossed around quite a bit. There's a commie channel called The Serfs, fitting name considering that's where their ideas lead, that really seems to love those terms. Let's analyze a few examples. It's simultaneously hilarious and rage-inducing that anyone threw money at this grift, said in reference to the Lincoln Project, which is an organization that appeals to the broader left and Democrat voters for donations in order to combat Trumpism from a rightist position. They did so by supporting Republicans that, while they were anti-Trump, were still not Democrats or leftists. Are these people grifters? I mean, maybe. They did take money from left-leaning sources who were too dumb to think beyond orange man fascist and never really made it clear where that money was going until they started endorsing anti-Trump Republicans. Just a friendly reminder that the free marketplace of ideas is a complete grift, said in reference to Dave Rubin blocking them over some Twitter trolling. I don't really know about Dave Rubin being a grifter, although Joe Rogan seems to think he is nowadays. Kanye was the wrecking machine, but right. I actually think, I think in the grand scheme of things, Can Candace is much bigger. I really believe that in terms Why? of, she, because I think she could be a direct line to all of the political parts of this if she decides How to go so? that route. Because I think she could, I think she could run for Senate or what? Yeah. You said her. you watched the podcast I did with her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I watched, I don't know, maybe at least, at least an hour and a half of it or so. Okay. Yeah. Why? Why what? Well, I don't know. Why are you saying it that way? I mean, I don't want to name any names, but there's a bunch of people that do it blatantly. You see them, and I've even seen them switch teams. And you see them switch teams, and I don't, I don't buy their rationalizations when it comes to ideology. What I think is what they're doing is they're switching teams because they realize there's an in on this team. Right. And they can just say, this is the problem with the team I used to be on, those fucking losers. And they're, they're really Benedict Arnold, right? And like, like they probably have as much of an affinity to the ideas of one side as they do the other side. They just go all in on one side to get acceptance from the group. Will you go on Joe Rogan's podcast and will you have libertarian presidential VP candidate on your show before the election? Um, will I go on Rogan's podcast? I, I asked him and our PR people asked him uh, about a bajillion times to go on for my book. 
we did not get a response as far as I know, so I don't know what happened there. It's a little weird for me to say that publicly. I don't know what happened. Um, Even if you disagree with the way people feel about so many different things, yeah. it doesn't mean you can't be their friend. It doesn't. And uh, I'm telling you, we got it that's wrong, so man. Sweet. Here's what's important. What's important is whoever that person is, they got to be sincere. Now, as soon as you feel like someone's a grifter, yeah. you got to cast them out. Right. You got to cast them That's out because cool. they got to figure that out on their own and they got to apologize. That's cool, man. You got listen, you can be wrong, but you have to be honest. And if you're just bullshitting, then I can't hang out with you. And I got to say, it is kind of funny to see Lance regurgitate a repainted so much for the tolerant left style argument. So your platitudes were utterly meaningless and you were a grift all along. Thanks for clearing that up. Said in anger out of Andrew Yang supporting Biden over Bernie. So is making moves out of political pragmatism a grift? Because that's literally what you and every other bread tuber and nearly every other leftist ultimately did when you decided you were riding with Biden a few months later. I think it's probably funniest to juxtapose these two examples though. The joy of being a leftist is wearing your values like a badge instead of a grift in response to Tim Pool's assertion that some moderates are afraid of speaking about their values publicly due to the far left. And your woke grift is tired when Paul Joseph Watson talks about the dominant religions of countries most likely to stone gay people to death. I'm sure you've noticed by now the obvious, what stands out like a sore thumb when I put these two tweets together. According to Lance, it's a grift when it's somebody he disagrees with politically, but it's wearing your values like a badge when it's a fellow lefty. Nowhere in that extended definition of grifter that I armed you with earlier in the video did I say that its definition is somebody you personally disagree with. And yet, that seems to overwhelmingly be the way that radicals use the term. Most of Joe Rogan's top viewed interviews are grifters. Now, you may just disagree with Alex Jones, Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, or Steven Crowder, but are they really grifters? Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson seem to genuinely believe what they say, even if you might disagree with them, while Alex Jones and Steven Crowder, on some level, though obviously not entirely, are exaggerating some of what they say for comedic effect. When people take sponsorships, sell products, or plug their Patreons, is the only criteria for them being a grifter whether or not the accuser agrees with their point of view? Not if the creator thinks they're telling the truth, not if they actually provide the good or service they're selling, but is it really all just politics to these people? Sargon is an excellent example. These accusations are a dime a dozen. LOL, Sargon is such an unbelievable grifter. All right, let's see what they're talking about. Man, Joe Biden likens Ted Cruz to Nazi propagandist Goebbels for helping Trump spread big lie about election fraud. That's mad. That's mad. Biden not even in office yet and he's already calling Trump and his administration Nazis. Trump can't even speak back on the allegation because they've torn out his tongue. Unreal. They, this is this is genocidal rhetoric. This is terrible. There is, it is awful, awful what the Democrats are doing right now. And the thing is, with so much power, you would think that they would have some kind of grace. But instead, they've gone into full-on vicious, absolutely crush our opponents mode. And that's quite terrifying. And it shows that it is the left that has been the problem. It is the way that they operate in politics. They are not tolerant. And the problem with not being tolerant is it means you can't run a democracy. What is so objectionable about this clip? Okay, you may disagree with what Sargon's saying. If you think he's wrong, fair enough. But clearly he believes it. And clearly he's speaking to an audience of people who also believe it. So if he's delivering the product they're paying for, how is it a grift? This is like a radical Christian saying that an LGBT YouTube channel catering specifically to people interested in LGBT ideology is a grift for delivering a product they're advertising that people actually want. Here's a lengthy criticism of Sargon from the now defunct subreddit of Chapo Trap House. And it's clear that they're trying to turn I disagree with Sargon politically into some blanket statement about his character and his business. This is a man who dropped out of college to scam people out of a video game Kickstarter and use that money to run a five year right wing grifting project that consists of him shitting on feminists while calling himself a classical liberal. Not only is this factually inaccurate, Sargon refunded the money and posted the receipts last I heard. It's also one of the most tryhard things I've ever read. Right up there with lol I have more subs and views than you, internet clout totally matters you guys. Let's take this caption, remove all of the personal attacks and statements of political difference, and see what criticisms actually remain. 
Nothing he's said ever provided an idea, concept, or solution to modern problems. He's never said anything useful besides SJW is bad. He's never provided a radical idea that can change the world, unlike Ruder Bregman and Richard Wolff on the left, or Jordan Peterson and Andrew Yang on the right. Andrew Yang on the right? Nothing he's said has provided valuable discourse, etc., etc. It basically boils down to two points. One, Sargon has never proposed a solution to the problems he points out, and two, all the problems he points out are SJW's bad. Even for back when this was written, I don't think this was the case. But nonetheless, if you are legitimately an anti-SJW individual selling anti-SJW content, and your viewers are all anti-SJWs looking for that content, how is this a grift? When a radical calls somebody who's in the mainstream center, you know, the liberals, the conservatives, grifters. They're generally not saying, here is a person lying, cheating, and stealing, saying things they know to be false, being hypocritical in order to get paid. Instead, they're saying, here is a person presenting ideas I think are false, and because I'm obviously correct about everything, they are taking money from people for reasons I don't approve of. Let's swing back to the serfs for one final chuckle. Anybody who says they're a socialist but isn't comfortable forming a worker co-op, or is a progressive who extols the virtues of worker rights and refuses to let their workers unionize is a grifter. Why yes, I do agree, Lance. This is why literally everybody laughed when Vosh said his business did not have to be a worker co-op, including myself. Check out my old Eat the Rich video on that topic if you like. Now, I don't believe the serfs are grifters. They might say a lot of dumb shit all the time, but I actually think they probably believe it. However, who knows if they're actually living it. In general, if you're a radical, you're also more likely to be a hypocrite. Yes, the number of male feminists who are forcefully respecting women with their penis is truly astounding. Yes, the number of cult leaders and mega church pastors who live hedonistic lives seems to be basically 100%. And yes, progressives and neo-socialists who spout rhetoric about wanting the workers' revolution while exploiting everybody around them as hard and fast as they can just seems to be the thing that BreadTube does. This realization was the center of the most recent debate between Vosh and Destiny, where PhilosophyTube was raking in shit tons of money online, keeping her income private, when a common lefty line of thought is that the expectation that incomes are kept private is one way that bosses keep workers in line by preventing them from comparing their pay, all the while encouraging people way less well off than her to go on rent strikes and other stuff like this. If it sounds hypocritical, that's because it is. And Vosh defended her in such a way that he basically revealed himself to be somebody not interested in truth, or even socialism at all on some level, but only raw power. No, really, listen to this. I try to live my principles, and I think that it would be unethical for me to maximize my existence in a capitalist society. I've turned on a lot of money for stuff that would maximize my existence in a capitalist because I think it's unethical to do so. I don't agree that like- How? Be because it doesn't further what I believe in, and it doesn't further what- What have you turned down? I've turned down a ton of fucking gambling sponsorships. There was okay, so turned, much money okay, flying around gambling. in the CSGO skin days. There was so much of that shit that I fucking turned okay. down. So you've turned, okay, good. And you've turned down, and I, for my part, have turned down every sponsorship. Cause Why? It's, it's not a part of my aesthetic. I don't want to. Okay, wait, then <laughs> don't make those no, things don't, the same. Don't, 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 wait, wait, don't compare that to me, okay? Huh. You're on a lower level there, okay? I intentionally, wait, I did, wait, no, 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 hold on, wait, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I intentionally have foregone money that I could use otherwise because it is in accordance with my principles, okay? You're not doing it because it doesn't fit the aesthetic that you sell on your YouTube channel. That comparison to me was insulting because I don't not take certain sponsorships because of my aesthetic. I do it because of my principles. Those two things are very different. That's what okay. upset me. Do you understand? When I said when I said aesthetic, I suppose you wouldn't buy me saying as a lefty, I don't like the idea of um, doing legwork for corporations to advertise products that I don't give a fuck about. But you would say that's walking back because what I actually believe is that it's purely an aesthetic flourish and me fleshing it out now that I realize you've been made upset by my language is an The thing is, is what I would say is I wouldn't believe you. I don't believe that. I don't buy that at all. Okay, I know, okay. I know you don't. But that's because fine. you've assigned me so little charitability. No, it's because the first response is the, is the most likely to be the honest time? one. And this. There are plenty so, of like higher order things that could be fucking with our ability to understand. Yes, truth. that's true. Right. Okay. So if you acknowledge that and you're a moral anti-realist, so there is actually no choice of the matter, which theory of truth is right. Then you also acknowledge that any empirical statement I make is also arbitrary. 
Um, I mean, I think it would be arbitrary insofar as we would have to disagree on like the meaning of truth, but I think that most people have subscribed to the idea that truth means something that can be empirically verified. If a person disagreed with that, I would have to kill them. There's no truth, that, there, nothing is objective, nothing is true, or it's all relative to what someone wants. Yeah, Everything. but I do think you can make the empirical Holocaust, statements well, about that the world. depends on you. Wait, yes, the morality of the Holocaust depends no, on your subjective- whether it happened. Oh, whether it happened? Mm -hmm. Sure, if you have a different definition of truth, then yeah, but uh, if a person- You can't say that they're wrong, they're just in a Oh no, well, I don't have to say that they're wrong. All I have to do is convince well, them. right now, you are basically saying that. Uh, I would disagree with them. I would try I to would, convince them off yeah, that point. Yeah, you would disagree with them, but you have to acknowledge from this, you know- Yes, you I acknowledge that. Positions. I've always acknowledged that, yeah. It's about power. So you are- so you are- you're in a state of complete nihilism about the world. No, no one's I, position I care is more about justified than another. Inherently, no. Correct. Wow, okay. So you're literally in complete... So actually, right now, if I wanted to, I could flip a coin, and if it lands heads or tails, I'm correct about this issue, and you have no way to refute what I just said. Empirically, no. But I could argue that that's dumb. Wow. Well... Does it matter? I mean, if you just acknowledge all you do is just scream at people to make you feel good. Wait, yeah, then wait, it's fine. Wait, no, I don't. Wait, I don't scream at people. So to make you don't, me feel you good. don't care about truth in the world, I guess. Wait, yeah, I do. I care about my truth in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You care about how you feel. Yeah, uh, yes, because all moral positions are downstream okay. of our subjective no, emotional preferences. How many times do I have to reframe this? No, no. I, it's just it's crazy to me hearing you say it. Like two plus two equals four, right? Mm -hmm. There are. Mo there are multiple theories of truth. Something can be true because it's actually existing in the world, right? Which is probably what you view truth as. You know, the cup is red is true if yes. it is actually, okay. There's another theory of truth. It could be something is true if and only if it makes me feel good, right? My mm -hmm. question to you would then be, well, which of those theories of truth should I adopt? It depends on which moral system you subscribe to. If you subscribe so you to a different one and that causes me harm, so I could just like kill you. So that theories of truth are moral statements. Sir. All of thought is just power grabs between people who can decide wow. subjectively okay. whether or not their positions Math are better is all than others. power grabs. Unironically? Wow. In some cases? The yes. truth of whether the Holocaust happened? A power grab. Yes! And this. The thing on like mob rule, I don't believe, I can't believe that you think that. There's no I, way that you do. Do you not feel I've applied a consistent standard where I think it's more moral to just submit yourself to the mob than it is to just kill everyone who comes for you? I... If I've submitted I, a no, consistent I standard, I don't I mean, think it's like, fair for you to accuse me of being in bad faith. It is consistent. Maybe that's how people feel when they argue against me and I'm consistent in something. Maybe you genuinely do believe this. I guess it's possible, but yeah, I'll look, be super serious in the future because I because I can think of a lot of scenarios that are really sweaty where fucking black dudes have been lynched by white people thinking they were in the right, where saying that like, well, maybe, well, but then you even said that earlier, maybe the black guy should just submit himself to get no, arrested I, and then no, they can hash I out said, of court. Wait, 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 yeah, wait, wait, if people are coming to arrest the black guy, then yeah, I think that he should submit to arrest rather than gunning down a bunch of unarmed white people. Well, not, coming not, from. not submit to arrest, but like a mob of white people approaching him. It Maybe really depends on the context there and how legitimate the lethal threat is. And this. Let's say that there are 10 people, okay? They're gathered on the beach. And unfortunately today, there is a lost soul, okay? He's 100 meters out. This guy is fucked. And none of the people on the beach they're not good enough swimmers to go get him, okay? Now let's say another guy walks by, okay? This guy is called Chad Marks, okay? Some people call him Charles Marks, okay? This guy is a fucking state champion swimmer. And he walks by and he sees that kid out there. Do you think that that guy, with his additional means, with all that he has available to him, do you think that it would be just as morally neutral for him to stand by and watch that person drown as the other 10 less capable people on that beach? Could he simply say, eh, I mean, I don't have like an obligation. It would be good if I did, but like, eh, I mean, I could just sit here and watch it happen. I don't think it's bad. It's just morally neutral if I sit here and watch him. If he has the means, I don't, I otherwise- don't think these are analogous. Ha, but no, 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 okay. should go out and save the person. Okay. Why is that disanalogous? Okay. Because if that they decided not to do that thing, if they decided to abstain, it would cost a person their life. Whereas in the case of a lefty opening a business, their decision to open it would not add any negative utility to the world. So in that case, we're, we're talking about for a lefty, it's either you abstain and you have nothing, or you participate and you have nothing 
assuming you don't do extra bad or extra okay, good. Okay, that's not Whereas really material the to the, the that's, 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 that's swimmer. If they abstain, you have a death, and if they participate, you have a that, that's, save that's, not, that's not at all material to Participation this Participation and abstinence in these two examples met very different outcomes. Well, participation in a morally righteous way, and the swimming one could result in saving somebody's life. Participation in a righteous way, in the economic sense, could be you opening a business that improves the material conditions of multiple other workers and families. I think those are comparable. I think that'd be right? great. Okay. Abstinence, in one sense, is you just stand by and you watch a person drown. And abstinence, which is negative. And abstinence, in the business sense, is you just stand by and you watch another business open up and exploit workers. Which would be neutral, but the death is negative. How is that? Okay, I never, ever, ever want you to say again that like capitalism is negative or business owners are bad because I don't you think have you bit... understand my argument enough to. I guess not because you have bit the neutral bullet on basically every single actor in a capitalist system. I d I'm sorry. If there's some irreconcilable difference that we're not going to resolve here, then we might as well not waste an additional hour on it. If you acknowledge that when a lefty opens a business and let's say pays market rate same as everyone else and the workers are treated fine, really middle of the road, as hard as that is to abstract, all you are doing in a purely empirical sense is giving local workers an additional choice, uh, uh, an additional place that they could sell their labor to. An unethical institution, unfortunate, but you are not compelling or mandating or directing any direct harm. If you didn't do that, there would be no benefit. To but the if, world. You if you have the means that, to you not, if you have the to means to act in a way that's and in more accordance, in more no, if you have the means to act in harmony with your principles, then for you to do less, I genuinely think that your perspective on this issue has been tainted or corroded in some way by the people that you've argued online. If it's with. been tainted or corroded by anything, it's by the fact that I went to a Jesuit high school and what part of what we taught, I guess, was like that you should live your principles. If you still have any delusions about whether or not Vosh believes what he's saying, or really any other bread tuber who parrots his rhetoric, I hope this puts them to bed. This is what a grifter actually is. When you openly, nakedly say that truth does not exist beyond what you can twist people into believing, that winning is more important than being correct, that the appearance of being anti-corporate is more important than living your principles, there is no more clear example of a grifter than that. The problem with the grifter worldview that Vosh espouses is that eventually reality will snap back. It does not matter how many laborers or scientists or engineers that Soviet Commissar Vosh browbeats into submission. If you don't adhere to objective, real-world truth at some point, you're gonna get Chernobyl out of your nuclear program. You can scream that 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 4 as much as you want, but the mushroom cloud forming over the ruins of your project does not care. And while that is an extreme comparison, this sort of thing happens all the time when you ignore the truth. What happened to Ethan Ralph, Andy Worski, Mr. Medicker, Channel Awesome, Game Grumps, or any other YouTube channel or online personality that ignored the truth in favor of grifting, hoping their popularity would allow them to skate on by? They're all shadows of their former selves, and that will be where Vosh finds himself sooner or later. The reason grifters have to keep leaving town eventually and move on is because the people they swindle inevitably catch up to them. The act of grifting makes enemies of your own audience, the very people that pay you. You can't run away from that forever. The clapback will come for Vosh and the rest of BreadTube in due time. And just like it did with Ralph, with Worski, Medicare, Channel Awesome, and Game Grumps, I will be here with a bucket of popcorn laughing my ass off about it. Thank you for watching, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to share it around and do all of the other algorithm positive stuff that the YouTube engagement metrics like. I don't know. Sub for more or hit up my Patreon or Subscribestar if you want to keep it coming. And be sure to stick around because I'm putting up a new video every single day. So I'll see you tomorrow. I love you.